All right, another problem with a swinging thing. Got a couple of these videos now. But in uh, this one, we got to figure out the tension of the cable once it gets to the bottom. So we got a 400 kilogram wrecking ball, nine meter long cable, pulled back 36 degrees from the vertical. So that's that angle. Calculate the speed when it gets to the bottom, at the lowest point. Well, the energy going from this at A, there's no uh, friction or drag we're worried about. So the energy at A, there is no work being done. It's going to equal the energy at B. And up here, we got a velocity is equal to zero. We're going to make this our height equal zero. Right, the height at B is going to be zero. So what's the height at A? That's the tricky part. So potential energy of gravity at A is all we got going to turn into kinetic energy at B. That's all we got there. So that's MGH at A is going to equal one half MV at B squared. So as often happens in these simple energy problems, the mass is not going to make a difference. So that mass is on both sides. But we need to figure out this HA, how high that is right there. And we've done that before. So we know that this whole cable is two meters. Nope, nine meters, nine. That's nine meters. But we know it starts over here, starts over here, right? So again, this orange part, we're going to the center of mass of that ball is nine meters. That's nine meters. But we want to find this green part. That's what we want to find. That's our H that we got. So we got to subtract what I'll label in blue here. We got to figure out that blue part. And that blue part is 9 cosine theta. Nope, can't quite see that. 9 cosine theta. Because the orange, that's the hypotenuse, that's 9. It's adjacent to the angle, so it's 9 cosine theta. So that green part is going to be that H at A is going to equal the 9, the L, the 9 minus the blue part, which is 9 cosine theta. 9 cosine theta. And that's taking 0 to be the bottom, right? So there we go. So that height. So over here we've got G, which is going to be 9.8. 9.8 times 9 minus 9 cosine 36. That's going to equal one half VB squared. Multiply through by the two. Right, put two over here. And take the square root of all that. And we've got our answer. That's how we figure that out. And once we figure that out, plug that all in, we get that it's 5.8. We got three sig figs, 5.80. 5.80 meters per second is the velocity at B. Now, calculate the maximum tension. When it's traveling through here, it's moving this way. Got some velocity at the bottom. If we draw a free body diagram there, we've got the force of tension up. We've got weight down, and the acceleration is upward into the center of this circular path. So we have a centripetal acceleration there. So that tension minus that weight is going to equal ma centripetal. 
So that tension will equal mg plus, right, add the mg to the other side, m v squared over r. And again, because when it swings through the bottom, it has to be accelerated into the center to make that circular path. That's where it'll be maximum because the tension is exactly opposite the weight there. It's got to hold up that weight. At other points, the tension and the weight are not offset, and the ball's not going as fast, so don't need as much tension there. Plug those numbers in. All right, we got 400, 400 times 9.8 plus 400 times RV squared, that over there, the 5.80 squared, divided by the radius. The radius is 9 meters, divided by 9 meters. And so we calculate that out and we get 5,000. 5,417 newtons, three sig figs, so 5,420 is our force. That's how you do that.